St. Louis just had a not quite historic snowstorm, but it was one of the biggest ones in the past decade or two, probably. Uh, we had between 6 and 12 inches of snow, a couple inches of sleet. Some areas had tons of freezing rain, and power went out at the studio. And that was the first time that that's happened since I've moved in here. Uh, the internet's gone down a couple times, but the power has not gone out before, so I never had a full test of the, I don't know, business continuity plan or whatever. I wanted to check out how things are doing today. Um, I did check things out over the VPN uh, because that came up first. That's running on my little open VPN uh, box. Um, but I want to check things over and make sure things are working today. So let's go in and, and see. Whoop. <laughs> First goal is not to trip and, and die just getting into the building. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. Well, no water leaked anywhere that I can see. So that's good. That was my first fear was that uh, a water pipe would burst since the power was out for hours. Luckily, the power, the uh, temperature never got down too cold. Looks like everything's running here. The UPS is on. Uh, HL15 is on, and uh, the other servers that are not set to turn on when they power back up are not on, so that's good. And over here is the main network rack, and uh, little this little guy is not giving me anything. Come on, turn on. Turn on light. I don't know why that's not working, but we'll do the manual override. Uh, got time pie over here, and little SDR pie. They're up. All these switches are up. Looks like the air gradients are back online. Monitoring the environment. I did notice one thing when I logged in on the VPN. Uh, my main Mac Studio over here did not come back on, although I see the lights on. So that's a little odd. I wonder if, if you have to log into it for remote access. I couldn't get to it remotely. Uh, so that's something interesting that I'll have to account for. Oh, man, I really need to dust up here. Uh, but just taking an inventory of everything. The clock came back on correctly. That's powered by PoE. Uh, this monitor, <laughs> that's funny. The monitor turns on, I guess, when it gets power back because it's a soft power button. But the workbench is all up. And a little project mini rack that we'll talk about soon. Did not turn on because I have that on a outlet that's not on. Oh! <laughs> so... That's working, which is good. This 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 is uh, my little utility Linux server. It should not be running right now. I'll have to shut that down later. Uh, but I just noticed that we have flying toasters. So this PowerBook turns on, I guess, when power is reapplied automatically. The Mac did not, but I think that's because I have it on a smart outlet. Uh, but this guy did. So let's shut this back down. And pretty much for every computer and server, you need to figure out, like, what do you want to do when the power is reapplied? Yeah, so the Mac Studio is asking for my password. So I'm guessing that uh, the ability to do screen sharing must be tied to having someone log in so that the computer finishes booting up. I don't know if there's a way around that, but I would like to be able to access this remotely when it turns on because sometimes I have something running on here or some file that's only on this machine that I haven't put on the network that I access remotely. Anyway, maybe I just need to change my thinking a little bit on that. Probably the most important thing to check uh, now that I'm back in is making sure that the, the two RAID pools are online on my HL15. So this is the uh, hard drive pool, everything looks good there, and the SSD pool, that looks good. Uh, no known data errors. Um, it looks like on December 8 was the last scrub, so I'll, I'll have to double check and make sure that there's no other errors after another scrub. I think I have them scheduled monthly. Uh, but also check on the other one, the little one in the rack, and that one is also saying everything's online. So that's good. I'm going to log in to one of them. I'll log in to ingest. And it looks like stuff is working on the NAS, so nothing got corrupted on the NAS, which is nice. One thing I was not worried at all about was losing any data. I have two full NASs here that have a live copy of the data that's using ZFS uh, to sync between the two. And then I have another complete off-site backup with everything. It has all my current projects, it has all my archives, and I also have a little portable hard drive that I use. I have it synchronized to the, uh, the current active projects, so another two terabytes of that stuff. And I take that with me home, so I had, I had three to four copies of everything. I, I wasn't worried about that. 
But it is annoying if you lose your active storage server because, you know, all the shortcuts are set up through there. It's the fastest one. I have 25 gig networking on it versus if I have to switch to the backup Pi, that's using 2.5 gig networking and, you know, it's a Pi. It's going to be a lot slower than a, a beefy ARM server. But the three things that I was worried about the most were the potential for condensation. Since it was so cold outside, I didn't know if there would be an issue with servers coming back up before the HVAC caught up and, and warmed up the space. That could be an issue, couldn't I? In, in some comments when I posted on Twitter about this, some people were saying that that shouldn't be an issue because the servers would be warmer than the ambient air and also the humidity isn't that high right now. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. What, what I was hoping to do, which I couldn't because the roads were pretty much impassable, was to come in and switch off the breakers for all the, the this rack basically so that nothing would come up until I'm ready to turn it on. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't able to do that and everything's back on, so that's great. Uh, but the other thing too is when power comes back on and people have their HVAC or whatever motors kick in and things, that can cause weird power fluctuations. That's the purpose, that's really the primary purpose of having a UPS and power filtering and things. You don't want your servers having tons of power surges or brownout levels and uh, having to deal with that. So the UPS kind of filters that out. Uh, but while it's charging up, I don't want my server to turn on and then all of a sudden the power's cut and the UPS can't handle it and then it shuts down unsafely again. Uh, anyway, that was one issue. The other one is over here in the bathroom, there's water pipes and water pipes freeze. And if they freeze, they expand and they crack and then you have leaks. That probably wouldn't be an issue. I mean, it, it would cause damage and it would be very annoying, but the water shouldn't migrate from there all the way into this room. That's one of the reasons I built you know, a wall here and, and made sure that the pipes in the ceiling wouldn't, even if they were spraying water out, they wouldn't make it over here. So that was another concern and I wanted to come in and, and trickle some water, but again, roads were impassable. But, uh, but I think the, the main thing that I was worried about was, I, this has been on my task list since I moved into this place, set up a Raspberry Pi with nut, <laughs> ignore these cables over here. I, I'm, act, I'm actively tracing some of these out to do some uh, some new PoE cameras. But my bigger concern was that uh, the servers kind of shut down unexpectedly because I don't have any UPS monitoring in place yet. I've had it on my to-do list for a long time to set up a Raspberry Pi on each UPS and set up NUT or network UPS tools. And that would let me tell any computer to say like monitor this UPS's status and shut down safely if it gets below X percent of battery or whatever. So I probably will have a video coming out on that soon because <laughs> I don't want this to happen again. And uh, you know, spring is when we usually have power outages here when we have big storms come through. Yeah, that's uh, that was a fail on my part. Um, there's some things that it's like, it's the perpetual maintenance items, the things that don't matter until they really matter. And that's one of them. So we'll, we'll probably do a video setting up network, uh, UPS tools on some Raspberry Pis and, and, uh, see how that all goes. Anyway, it all is working. Some things came on that shouldn't really come back on. So I'll have to twiddle with their bio settings for that. Uh, but otherwise I'm, uh, I'm happy that there's no, there's no business continuity problems. When you when you plan on uh, potential disasters, you want to have you know have different ways to come back up. Like I could do most of my work from home, but of of course I can't really record home, and I don't have any cameras at home anymore. So maybe maybe I should get a used camera and have it at home just in case I need to record some videos from home for a week or two. While you know if this building is inaccessible, that's uh, one thing I learned. So anyway, I will see you next time.